This is Bathurst. Remarkable. 7.30 p.m. Saturday, the night before the great race. The Bathurst 1000, Mount Panorama, New South Wales, Australia. Brock fans in pursuit. And Peter Brock complies. No complaints, no questions asked. The relentless pursuit of the fans has continued through the week leading up to the race, as it has whenever Brocky is in the public eye. These people are the fuel that powers the legend, the phenomenon that is Peter Brock. I think it'd be good. I think this thing would actually be a sweet little vehicle run, wet weather tyres and everything else. They have travelled to the mountain on a pilgrimage to witness the return of the king, the king of the mountain. It's 15 years since Peter Brock won his last Bathurst 1000, and five years since he last drove the notorious circuit. But now, he's come back, back to Bathurst. dear old dog, Dougie, he would love hopping in there. You put him in there, he's about 14 and he's struggling a bit. That's very nice. It's the 40th anniversary of the great race and the King's 30th anniversary, with the possibility of a 10th win to add to his unparalleled victories over the mountain. You don't have to be a Brock fan to be aware of him and his equally famous 05 car. They've had a dominant impact on all forms of motorsport, particularly in Australia and New Zealand, over many years. Come with us now as we put you in the passenger seat alongside Brocky for the ride of your life, to trace the remarkable life of this most Thank you, remarkable Australian. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Well, what do you reckon about that? Hey, mate, I've been waiting years for this sort of shit, you know? I've been, well, I've been following me, I've got all his memorabilia, I've got everything of his. It's just busting my ass, excuse the expression, to get here to see him and meet him. It's just, uh, it's just unbelievable, this part. Yeah. I've had this thing for three years, but I was going to paint it his colours, his old colours. Yeah. But when I heard him coming back, we just hung out and hooked into it. Uh, that's what it's all about, you know? You can follow those who love you. All right? All the best. Thanks, matey. Cheers. Go, 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 go. With a Bathurst record of 28 starts in succession, six pole positions, nine wins, 11 podium finishes, and 22 finishes, Peter Brock has rightfully earned the crown as king of the mountain. So why did he contemplate coming back from self-imposed retirement at the age of 57 to tackle what must be one of the world's most demanding touring race car events and confront the young guns of the V8 supercar circuit. We've had this land here, us Brocks, oh, maybe 140 years. And uh, although it's not that far from Melbourne, it's just a beautiful place to be.
Well, as you can see, it's a magnificent uh, panoramic view up here. Uh, those lovely rolling fields here across the Great Dividing Range. And I suppose you might wonder, is this what your average garden variety X racing car driver does in their spare time? Do they all have one of these buildings? Probably not. Probably not. In fact, I'd say that they do not. But uh, it suits me. Places like this, where you can sit back and sort of get life into perspective, they play a very, very important role in allowing you to see life for what it truly is, and that is a magnificent learning experience. Peter Brock was born on the 26th of February, 1945. His parents, Ruth and Jeff Brock, came from Hurstbridge, a small community on the northeast fringe of Melbourne. Look, as a kid, I, I really, uh, I pushed the envelope. I, I'll be absolutely uh, clear about that. I think it'd be fair to say my parents probably thought, what have we done to get this kid? I mean, he's, he won't listen to us. He's off there doing his own stuff. And, uh, you know, he's headstrong and he's just going to do things his way. And certainly I can tell you that I was, I felt compelled to do a lot of things like that. I was very fortunate. I had a fairly athletic sort of approach to life. I could uh, get out there and uh, run and jump and play footy and play cricket and swim and what have you, until cars finally got me. And I thought, yeah, hey, this car business is not bad. I can actually uh, get this thing to do what I tell it to do. And to me, it made a lot of sense. The warm summer air is suddenly shattered. The young man, Peter Brock, knows that at the gum tree it's a sharp right. Then over the rise, along the old creek bed. Then a long, slow, snaking curve around a disused orchard. And then, back to his excited pit crew. So, as far as I was concerned, the moment that I actually took to driving, I found something I loved doing. I found what it is in life that my, was really my heart's desire, the thing I, I knew was right for Peter Brock. The Brock family ancestry dates back to the beginning of Australian motorsport. Henry V. James, a great uncle of Jeff Brock, Peter's father, was a founder of the Automobile Club of Victoria. He organised what became the first races on the east coast of Australia. It was those early family ties that captured Jeff's attention towards motorsport and the fascination filtered through his young family. When I started working for Austin Distributors in uh, Melbourne, which used to be the old Austin Healy agents, uh, and they raced them, I used to go along and take Peter and the, well, take the family. And of course, Peter would never leave the fence. You know, he'd never be looking for ice creams or anything. He was mad keen. Well, I always knew he'd be involved in some way with cars because he loved them so much. And when he decided to go racing, yes, we encouraged him. We said we'd, we would support him. Well, the first noises he made as a baby were almost motor car noises. And then he'd ride his bike, you know, and he'd uh, ride it as though it had a motor in it. And uh, then he went on from that, you know, started driving on the farm here and in the trucks. Well, my uh, dad used to let him drive the truck around. He'd set it going for him. It's too small to reach the pedals but he'd steer it while he dad hopped up in the back and threw the grass hay out. The Brock boys, Neil, Peter, Lewis, Philip, were all exposed to motorised sport at an early age. But Peter positively thrived on life behind a wheel. And this odd-looking vehicle was his outlet. Believe it or not, this was an Austin 7. Peter, with support from his father, assembled this from some derelict 7s in his spare time. In 1960, when Peter was 15, he watched the very first Armstrong 500, the forerunner to the Bathurst 1000. And throughout the day, Peter would jump into the beast and thrash around the family paddocks as if he were in the race. Seven years later, Peter realized his ultimate dream. Backed by his parents, his racing debut was made in this ungainly 179-powered Austin A30 at Winton. In it, he won a staggering 102 races over 65 meetings, and a motor racing career was launched. We started going to Bathurst, of course, with his first drive, and uh, that was uh, an amazing situation. We had a business in which Peter was involved called the Diamond Valley Speed Shop, and Peter sat at the phone there, I reckon, for three weeks, waiting for Harry Firth 
to ring him. He'd had an interview with him and done a test drive. And, of course, when Harry rang, Peter was over the moon and he, he popped in on his way to Bathurst uh, with the race car. They drove it there. And, of course, the next day we hopped in our car and away we went. And <laughs> never been there before. Went up the mountain and had a pretty rugged time, really. But, uh, anyway, he came in third and we were really pleased about that. This car is uh, a replica of the 1963 Cortina GT that uh, Bob Jane and Harry Firth drove to victory here at Mount Panorama in the first year. And they used to tell us the New South Wales people, they'd tell us, oh, this is our piece of dirt up here, you people don't know what you're doing. Well, I think we proved that wrong. <laughs> certainly did, yeah. yeah. Took over the race here early. Yeah. Well, we drove around Bathurst in an entirely different way to what they did. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we used to go, for instance, before that at Phillip Island, we'd just take a stand in the car and go down and do 500 miles. See what broke. Yep. Well, we were quite used to, uh, you know, dealing with new tracks and all that sort of thing. And we evolved a completely different way of going around methods mm -hmm. to what the locals did. <laughs> I go up there, I've been there the last couple of years, I'm going to go up again this year. Harry and I formed a very special sort of bond over 30 years. I, in many respects, I suppose I was the son that he never had and that uh, he's always um, supported me and given me little tidbits of information and shared a lot with me. And uh, we, we do get along very well. I mean, I, I admire Harry enormously and I know that uh, he's got a bit of a soft spot for me as well. Another great influence in Brocky's motor racing career is Ron Harrop, another Bathurst veteran. Well, I've certainly known Peter for, uh, geez, it must be 30, 30 something years anyway. I can remember uh, when I probably first met him was on trips when. Uh, he was going to Oran Park in Sydney with his A30 and I was going to uh, Castle Road which was a drag strip in Sydney and uh, he had his 179 engine A30 and I had a 179 engine FJ Holden and uh, we'd sometimes meet in roadhouses along the way. Potted up Tiranas to high-end technology, Ron Harrop is today one of the world's leaders in automotive engineering. Ron Harrop and I have been talking for some time about getting involved and getting a race team happening. Uh, Ron, brilliant engineer and uh, well known in the motor racing world, sort of thought, I want to do something. I want to get out there and start building bits and pieces and getting out there and, and uh, showing the rest of the world that my company has that expertise. And so he'd use it to uh, keep his company's name out there and get a few of those uh, other race teams knocking on his door saying, hey, we need what you've got. Brock's decision to drive has not been announced. Peter Brock. The team Brock was gearing itself for the great race. The famous 05 racing number was still in mothballs. Team Brock would drive the 54 car. The uh, trimmer and torque were terrific. Um, something on? What do you have on your agenda for the next little while, let's say the next uh, month or so? I've got my uh, fitness regime, of course, down there, uh, a bit of a swim and stuff like that.
By now, speculation and rumors were rife about the possible return of Peter Brock. But one of the main concerns about him driving again was the uncertain ability of a 57-year-old body to withstand the demands such a race would put on a V8 supercar driver. I've had different people say to me at times that, oh yeah, yeah, you've been thinking about this for a while. Oh yeah, this has sort of been happening. It's been in the loop. And uh, I've seen you out there sort of training and looking after your health and stuff like that. And I thought, well, someone else knows something I don't know. Because I was just doing it. I mean, I was just out there. Uh, I decided, I guess, going back the uh, towards the earlier months of the year 2002 to sort of, I thought I feel like doing a bit of exercise. I felt like I was sort of sitting around and stagnating a bit. Not that I was uh, inactive, but I just felt like it. And uh, so I just started a bit of swimming and a bit of uh, walking and a bit of general stuff to get my body moving. And uh, curiously enough, when, uh, when the offer was put to me and I sort of thought about it, and thought, oh, that's an interesting proposition. And one of the areas that I could uh, totally dismiss was, was I physically capable of doing it? I mean, a lot of people figure that once you get to a certain time in your life, that you are uh, incapable of doing certain things. It's a limitation, I guess, that uh, people impose upon themselves because of... Um, I suppose every book they read, the newspapers, etc., say, oh, if you're a certain age, that's it, you are over the hill. So uh, I've always been a bit of a contrary side. So mm, that goes without saying. Mm. But the bottom line of it all is that your commitment to doing this properly has been greater than I've ever seen it before. I'd have to say right back from when I first got to know you, and we were a lot younger then, you never, I had, in fact, you were averse to the thought of ever going to the gym. Oh, this yeah. is the first time sure. in your life you've ever done gym. it. Gym? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a uh, cross at... August 14, 2002, at Motorola, Motorola headquarters in Melbourne. The announcement the motoring world was waiting for. Uh, huge story, yeah. uh, his attitude has been, when the time is right, uh, when he's got everything organised, well, he'll do it. Well, the time is right, he has got everything organised, so he's Peter Brock. He'll take it for a while. Thanks, Classic. Uh, thanks, folks. Firstly, uh, it does give me a great deal of delight to be here, particularly at uh, Motorola's uh, offices, to uh, uh, make this announcement. They've certainly been part of uh, the decision making process. A number of reasons, I suppose. Uh, the geriatrics of Australia, the uh, pensioners, the over 55s, etc. They're all hanging out for this, saying, well, if Brocky didn't do it, maybe there's hope for me. Going to Bathurst this year is going to be uh, one of the great adventures in my life. I, and I think I can potentially make a bit of a statement for people here who are uh, perhaps um, figuring that life has passed them by. That, and I know a lot of kids I went to school with and a lot of uh, people that I've began my motor racing career with, a lot of them have basically given up. Yeah. They say, I can't, no, well, I don't see it that way. And I've, I've always um, made sure that my body's working right and everything else so that when I want to do something, well, my body responds, yeah. But there are those people who have said that you went out on the high and why blot your coffee book and mm. and i have to be honest when we first told james his thing was that yeah it'd be interesting i mean ever since uh, ever since he left his last race at bathurst where unfortunately they uh, didn't finish but had quite a good start to it you know everyone's always sort of asked me you know if he's going to get go back and do it again and when are you two going to join up and uh, do the race together and all that sort of stuff and um, honestly, I'm not sure if, uh, I don't know how I'd feel about him uh, going back out there and doing it again. It's, it's, a hard, it's a hard question for someone who's had so much success, whether going back out there would be a, a, a wise thing to do, but I don't know. I suppose he still, at the end of the day, loves driving. He's, uh, the passion's never left him, and uh, after doing Targa um, this year, he's definitely not lost any of his talent. Target Tasmania is one of the world's greatest motoring events. 
In April 2002, Peter Brock and son James competed with all the aggression and determination to win that you could expect from a car with that famous name stenciled on the side. Sign of James, don't look at results, just go to the, just go each day and see where they're going to start off each morning. Go, oh, are we doing all right? Well, I'm telling you, you're either in sixth or seventh. Well, all I can say is that uh, there must be some sort of um, error going on, but it's every now and then things work our way, so this is good. thing to see and I'm sure that he'd have a lot of support out there to go and do it and uh, look if he does I just uh, wish him all the best. Target Tassie was uh, a, uh, something that did um, affect my decision making process a bit. I remember Plastic ringing Bev just after Targa and saying uh, Bev, uh, she's probably pretty well down here. Has he thought about sort of uh, the mountain bit? said, oh, come on, give me a break. She said, you know, he will, he will or he won't, depending on what he... No, he sort of said, why don't you use your influence? She said, yeah, you're wasting time, you know. We've grown up with Brocky, mate. That's why we follow HRT, because Brock is HRT. So, you know, if you want to follow a car, mate, follow Brocky. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it's great. Fantastic. Good to see. Champion like Brocky should be there. Doesn't mean anything to me, mate. I'm a Dodge man. Oh, I just think the king of the mountain and uh, all, all that history uh, coming back, I think it's fantastic. I just think Peter Brock coming back to the Bathurst Mountain is the best thing that's ever happened. We'll be there to see him. We'll be there to see him. God, I never got to see Brock here at Bathurst, but this year I'm going to get to, so that'll be a great thing, I reckon. He's a legend and we're going to be there to see him. Yeah. Peter Brock, he's, he's a, a legend. legend. <laughs> he's a legend, top luck. Brocky, well, I'm a Ford man from hell, but Brocky's a legend. <laughs> yeah, I hope he wins it. I wouldn't even know his age. Who? Oh, is he? He's old. He's never too old. Never too old to drive a car. So, everyone's really keen. They all want that. I think it's awesome. He's an awesome driver. He's excellent. He drives a holding car. He's holding rock. I think it's great. Can't wait to race against him at Bathurst. So you, you, what are you driving? Uh, I'm driving for Caterpillar. So yeah, it'll be good fun. <laughs> I might be able to learn something from him. <laughs> I really think that he can uh, uh, stir some of these people up and uh, show them what it's about. He wasn't a champion 
that long for nothing. He knows what it's all about and he knows how to do it. It would be really good to see him come back. I reckon he'd be a classic. I would like to see him win. Even though I'm a foot fan, I would like to see him win. He's a good driver. Love him, man. In your last race, you might have been leading the batters, but the car didn't finish. Well, nobody remembers that. They just remember that you went out there sure. giving 100, 110%. And your fans, no matter what you do, are going to be there totally supporting you. So it's, you know, there was a lot of questions, a lot of soul searching. Mm. And I have to say that... At the end of the day, tossed yeah, no, it tossed no. the coin, but <laughs> it, was, it was realistically a, uh, not an easy decision to make. But uh, it went from being an interesting idea into being something which I regard now as being, you know, pretty well essential. Absolutely. Because there's so many other uh, factors involved. I mean, we've got our own V8 supercar race team. I guess I've always had a feeling that a car's got to look right. And I'm talking about how stickers are placed on the car. And let's face it, uh, that's a major part of how motor racing works. I mean, the sponsors are there and they all like to uh, have their sign as big as possible, but there's got to be a balance about it all. There's got to be a look that says this car is, is right. There's a balance about it, cohesiveness about it. And when you look at the symmetry of, 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 I guess, there's the front of the car, there's the back of the car, there's the lines going through it, etc. it's got to look right. And I, I guess the very first time I noticed that was back in 1972 with the Tirana XU1s, which popped up with a brand new paint job and immediately went fast. If a car looks good and people feel good about it, it goes a long way towards, uh, I guess, that team, get, give it, getting that team spirit that is so vital to winning races. I think going to Bathurst this year is going to be uh, one of the great adventures of my life. Looks alright though. When the uh, idea was put to me by the people that run V8 Supercar Racing, people from Avesco, as things progressed, it became obvious that uh, this was more than an interesting proposal. It was almost becoming what I would term to be something that was essential if we were really going to get our team to operate at the very highest levels. Uh, well, Richo, that's going to be good up there. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. George Reynolds co-drove with Bob in 1964 and he's here this morning as well. There's a few blokes here. 
It's amazing how the over 55 has just automatically gravitate to one another. What, you two? No, you're in there. Over they are? No, they are not. Are we oh, yeah. Uh, Richard, three quarters. Three quarters. Three quarters. <laughs> Are you going to crack 55 up there? Uh, I'll be 55 just before up there. Would you really? That was a huge coverage, yeah. right? Darren Hinch wants to speak to you too. Does he? Quarter of Do you want a word to him? Sure. Yeah. Brock interviews. <laughs> Can I get you with Bob? More controversy? Sorry. Yeah, I do. <laughs> More. If I can read. Yeah. I'd uh, trip 11. Don't, what are you doing there? You're going, what are you doing? You're going, no, no, it's then foolish. Hello, Bob. You. Congratulations. Right. Congratulations to you, Bob. Bob, how's it going? Good night. Dickie boy. Good night. Hi, mate. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome, Adam. Thanks, Thanks mate. mate. You, you drive with him, Bob? Or? Yeah. 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 He's Bob and I. We've all heard a lot about this man in the last day or so. He's the biggest rock this morning. So too is Jim Richards, Dick Johnson. Understand Larry Perkins and Russell Ingle may have just turned up. John Harvey is here. Mark Scaife, the defending Bathurst champion. Jason Bright, Greg Murphy, Garth Tander and Jason Bardwana are also here. So if, uh, if those drivers could just come up towards the front of the stage there and we can grab a quick photo opportunity. Basically, folks, the... Uh... H. Tony Longhurst is here, of course. Yeah, I think you should. Mark's I know you, Harry. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Oh, good news, good news. Put your hands together, folks. Past and present champions at Mount Panorama. These are the guys that made this race so special, such an integral part of Australian motorsport history. Although the inevitability of the great race is looming, Brock has no hesitation in honouring commitments made to friends and colleagues. What he wasn't to know was that those commitments had the potential to shatter his dream of tackling the mountain one more time. All the big names in racing are here. Brock, Goss, Grice, Richards, Carter, Rogers, Morris, Shivers, Harrop, Harvey and Bartlett. The legends really warmed up the HQs and the fans took advantage of the rare chance to rub shoulders with so many heroes that shaped the sport they love. At this particular point in time, I'm not too sure which track we're on or actually what the whole format is, so it's uh, going to be a very interesting experience. They may be legends of yesteryear, but they aren't afraid to learn some new tricks. You would not believe this. They're going to do battle at the Speedway on the dirt in, of all things, go-karts. What was meant to be a fun night go-karting ended in near tragedy. How you feeling? Oh, not too good. Not too good. A little pretty spectacular up there. Yeah, well, it's fun. Drove to the top of him and uh, landed on the uh, something not in my bit back there isn't good. On Sunday, August 25th, less than 24 hours after the go-karting crash with a compressed vertebra and suspected neck and shoulder injury, Brock tackled the unforgiving Australian Safari Rally for eight days of bone-shattering outback torture. These were to be eight days that would test not only his body, but question his philosophy and resolve to return to Bathurst. It was a bit of a big accident yesterday for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was last night. As we speak, it was uh, Saturday night in the, at the Speedway in uh, Darwin. And I thought this is a long, long way away from the start of the Australian Safari at Bathurst. First thing I thought of was this machine is bouncing up and down down the road. I thought, safari, uh-oh. Anyway, uh, I uh, decided to do it, come down here. And you know, it's strange, once you start 
the next stage and you get in the rhythm of the whole thing. If you, if you can stop your mind from wandering, it works out okay. If you think about how sore you feel, you get sore. Despite the problems, Webster and Brock won their class. During the rally, Peter Brock had lost 10 kilos in weight, and for the first time in his career, he learned what happens when a body goes into trauma. His measurable body vitality dropped from 100% to a mere 5%. He said at this time, it gave me the opportunity to walk my talk. With only a week before the great race, Brock and his team travelled to Winton Motor Raceway in country Victoria, and for the first time, Brock is introduced to the specially prepared Holden V8 supercar. He and his co-driver, Craig Baird, put the car through exhaustive tests and for the first time in five years, the master is back, doing what he does best. The young guns watch and wonder.
when we had it before, when I sort of thought, yeah, we're on the right track, you're right there, the car sort of see if it take a set. You can actually get it in the corner, it felt like the whip was sort of like that. Everything we've done since then has just been, you know, it's just, it's, it has a nail. No, we're just tuning the, uh, the suspension. We've got a bit of understeer and uh, we've been using up a bit too much travel. So we've just changed uh, bump stops and springs and um, we'll see how that goes. It's as if all roads lead to Bathurst. With the mountain in their sights, it's as if the race team transporters hold back to allow Team Brock to lead the parade. Is it out of respect? Or concern that a 57-year-old is about to give them the lesson of their life? Bathurst is unique. There is, I guess, a, an understanding with the general public and with the drivers and entrants and participants. They feel this is a very special piece of real estate. It's evolved, I guess, from the pick and shovel days. When they built that road, there is a scenic road during the Great Depression. It follows the natural topographical features it's not a track that has been designed by computers or with a heavy engineering input. It has got blind crests and brows. It's got uh, cambers that sort of trick you out. It's, it's a fantastic bit of road. And I think because it's that way, drivers appreciate it. They know that it's difficult and they know that it's going to be one that uh, they're going to have to rise to the occasion to get it right. And you know, the general public recognise that. They know that Bathurst is something special. There's something about that track, there's something about that name, which inspires, a, a, I guess, a level of awe in the, uh, in the psyche of the majority of Australians. They just feel it, they know it. And uh, you can talk about Sandown, you can talk about Iron Park, you can talk about all these other tracks, but when you say Bathurst, and we're going to go around that mountain. And we're going to get this car singing along around through McPhillamy and over Skyline and whatever. You. People go, yep, their ears prick up because they know that is challenging and it's become part of the Australian idiom. It's to be the 40th anniversary of the race and the Bob Jane T March 1000 promises to be bigger and more exciting than ever. Basically, the same as the other stuff, except it's not so that's not What are you doing, Ben? 
I'm I'm just getting finding out where I'm going to put the Velcro to. Um, the seat to the driver chair. Yeah, the seat, so that they don't have to change the back, but just the seat. They're both different thigh supports. So we've got to make it simple so they can change their lower seat as they drive a chair. Before his car is put on the track, we see why Brocky is loved by motor fans, especially the kids. For them, there's always time. A challenge by radio personalities becomes one of the week's lighter moments. And for a brief time, the camaraderie between rivals provides an unusual but poignant photo opportunity. Well, I mean, everyone knows that I've landed on my head a few weeks ago in this go kart thing, and most people would say he's passed it. What's he doing out here driving around Bathurst again? So, <laughs> yeah, Scapey just took me a bit of a trip in the uh, wheelchair, a bit of a. Bit of fun. Well, I, I saw you um, at them in the safari. They didn't, and I tell you what, you, you looked a lot worse at them in the safari. You just did them by an accident in that wheelchair. Oh yeah, I oh, know. I was. Uh, they do account on your um, on your welfare. Basically, your body's vitality, and I was down to five percent. But right now, as you're talking to me, I'm nearly 100 percent. I'm around 97 or some number like that, which is pretty damn good. So uh, I'm feeling fit and ready to go. Bathurst is many things to many people. It is history and heritage, art and culture, education and training. But to the thousands of fans who make the pilgrimage every year, it is the spiritual home of Australian motorsport. There's Nicky and all these people I know. What's happening? Yeah, you're looking for that. They're a historic touring car, right? Okay. Did you come with food, Charlie? No. Now watch this, guys. I'm wife. Traditionally, before the great race, the drivers attend a major autograph session that continues into the night. As history tells it, Peter Brock initiated this signing tradition, his way of giving something back to the fans. This now has become an integral part of the Bathurst weekend and motorsport in general. Okay, go. Hey, Peter. We've got to put this here. Thanks, thanks for signing my plaque for me. Can I do a good job? Did you read it? Signed it with you. Okay, there you go. Okay. Cheers. Way you go, way you go. Just a jacket. Very famous place, but you've enjoyed such immense success over the years. Barry, not in my wildest dreams. I didn't for a moment think that uh, when uh, Skatey and I 
and had a great run really until the car sort of uh, just misfired a bit. But I thought that's a pretty good way to quit. Uh, it worked out, uh, I thought, okay. And uh, as they say, quit while you're ahead, move on. But uh, circumstances changed and uh, here I am, 2002, sitting there a, a day away from getting back on the track that I love so much. I've got some injury. My feelings are, uh, well, I can't wait to get out there because I, you know, the car's sort of pretty good. And V8 Supercar, you know, it's got about maybe 600 plus horsepower. Nice thick blue gearbox, big Roddy Harrop brakes and stuff like that. Why, why wouldn't you want to get out there and have a drive? But of course, um, there is the uh, other feelings, which is, well, I don't want to make a mug of myself. I'm going to drive around there pretty well. I haven't done much driving in a V8 supercar at all for uh, since 97. A few laps the other day at Winton, but mainly sorting out the uh, springs and shocks and stuff like that so we can make it uh, you know, nice to drive. So it's going to be interesting the next few days. Now, Peter, what's been the response from your literally hundreds of thousands of fans out there that you've been uh, signing autographs for vigorously for quite some time? What's been the response from them? Well, basically, uh, their expectations are uh, quite high. <laughs> they reckon, yeah, Brocky, you can do it, you know, number 10, that sort of stuff. And uh, they figure that there's no reason why you can't just get out there and sort of do what you did over all these years. Well, you and I both know that um, that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of uh, a lot of other issues that you've really got to look at these days, uh, getting your team sort of organised and uh, making them feel good about what's going on. Reliability is a major factor. And, uh, you know, just the whole world of uh, V8 supercar racing now has changed, even if it's only subtly year to year. By the time you look at five years, you think, yep, things have changed a fair bit. There's a lot of different rules and regulations with testing and things like that. I'm having trouble to pick lead the pit speed limiter. I'll probably get pinged on that a few times, but I'm working on it. You know, it's new technology for a PB. But uh, so the, the people have been very, very supportive, and uh, I guess you could say they've been uh, very optimistic. My peer group, the people sitting on my right, and I guess the Ford people on my left, they're probably feeling quite different. A lot of them are sort of thinking, what's he doing here? Come on, Brock, move over. You're past your use pie date, and that sort of stuff. So quite a difference between the uh, those involved closely in motor racing plus versus the uh, enthusiasts. Fantastic. Well, Peter, it's great to have you back here. I know that uh, the fans are very keen to catch up with you and get an autograph. Have a great, safe run on Sunday, and uh, take care. Thank you very much, very much, Barry. And look, I do appreciate the tremendous level of support I've got out there, and I'll be getting around the top of that mountain. I'll be enjoying myself. I'll be giving you a wave, and I hope you wave back. I certainly will. Peter Brock, ladies and gentlemen. Thursday, the first day of business.
With all of the teams strutting their stuff for the eager fans, it is the sleek and stylish Team Brock car that turns heads. But looks aren't everything. This is the time for the drivers, the cars, and the circuit to become as one. To work in symmetry in a search for the perfect drive. I found this uh, 1997, or oh, 1995, whatever it was. Stop my fingers getting worn through. Everything else I've lost. <laughs> Well, this is something is that, right? that um, I suppose everybody wants to be uh, involved in a race team with an icon and uh, all of a sudden we've had the opportunity where uh, you can get uh, one of the team owners who is the icon, Peter Brock, to get in and drive the car. So I know uh, we're fairly excited about it and I suppose all the people in Bathurst are too because I think you'll see the biggest crowd you'll ever see at Bathurst for a long time and they've probably come to see one man and that's the man sitting in the car there now. So she'll be a big... Big weekend. Practice sessions are few in the lead up to the race. Most teams would like more time to accustom their driver and car to the track, but this is not to be. There are only three practice opportunities before race start. This is not nearly enough time for the teams striving for perfection. The race requires a constant adjustment to the car's dynamics in search of the perfect balance. 21st century technology allows the race car engineers in the pits to virtually be in the driver's seat. While this is a vital component in modern racing, it also puts the drivers under intense scrutiny and immense pressure to perform.
Chris was going to stop into the middle. Yeah. Yeah. But understood him very much so on uh, El Corona. I just wobbled around a bit. The car wasn't feeling, uh, you know, balanced at all. But it was, uh, you know, nice to be back there. Sort of, it becomes quite instinctive, I think, you know, where to put the brakes on and where to change that down through the gears. I sort of, oh, did two or three laps. I thought, oh, yeah, that's what you do. So, uh, you know, just let uh, Craig have a play around and uh, we just changed the car again when I hopped out to... Uh, try and stop it from uh, misbehaving. It's pretty good. Rocky dismisses problems with the car as being minor. However, as we are to learn, things are not going to plan. And there are problems that could seriously jeopardise Team Brock's chances. It runs down and form a pool on the back of the block, and, the, and then it's bone dry. Because the back edge of that, the back edge of the flywheel is dry. It's not a the old master of the young gun, Craig Baird, being co-drivers, it is becoming increasingly apparent that their driving styles and techniques are different. Compromises will have to be made to balance and tune the car to satisfy both drivers. But this will take time. And for Team Brock, time is at a premium. While the crew carry out continual checks and running adjustments on the car, what appears at first as a minor problem with the radiator is hopefully fixed with a couple of new clamps. Well, basically, um, we had a small oil leak from the gearbox area, so we're now changing the um, front input shaft seal on the gearbox. Um, and Ross is doing some um, bigger radiator clamps for the hoses. Friday the 11th, October 2002. The crowds are building, and so is the tension. While the 
focus is on the star drivers and their high-tech machinery, the little boy lost wanders onto the Team Brock enclosure. Harrison gets closer to his idol than he ever imagined possible. But how he will explain this to his dad is another story. Harrison, just enjoy yourself. Why you in the pants? Your dad will be as worried about you as you are about us. Yeah, all right. You have to be tired of feeling much young, guys. 30th anniversary. Rocky's got the balls to come back and have a rug on him. He's still really king of the show, isn't he? All in all. Uh, probably unlikely with all the young blokes that he's going to make number 10, but um, it will give him a nice financial boost for maybe a two-car team next year, eh? I think you'll do a really good job. I think uh, Craig Baird and, and uh, Peter will be a good combination and uh, hopefully we better. But uh, they'll do a good job. He's definitely, you know, he's a old statesman of the uh, sport. No? It's good to see him come back. Um, probably be the last time you'll ever see It'd be good for the band throwing to finish, but not, not to win. As long as you beat Scafi over the line, it's the main thing. Top 10 to be good. Top yep. 10. Yeah, very good. No problem. Six point two kilometers of race track. Race pace two minutes twelve seconds per lap. One hundred and sixty one relentless laps, if you can cut it. Because this place, Mount Panorama, takes no prisoners when it comes to race cars. And neither do the patrons on the mountain, Hamburger Hill.
on the mountain. As you can see, I've got a big fella over here. This is my fella, right, Peter? Uh, man, how are we? Yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. So, so and yeah. what are you find the mountain so far? I love the mountain. I've had a lot of That's drinks. Right. And drinks yeah. Very well. We're here what else with Brocky. Hey, hey Brocky. Hey. Brocky! Hey, morning, guys, alright? 32 years. You know he's been coming. You've been coming here 32 years. Sure have. Tell us about it. I'm coming here till I get a good one. He hasn't had a good one yet. Well, don't tell his wife. Make it a good year. Who you want to win? Plenty of girls, plenty of racing, and the, and the great red and white between the mobile hold and clean to win. One, two. The O5, he's a legend. He's my god. Is he? My bloody oath. Drivers, the cars, and their pit crews perfect their teamwork. Because here on the track, it's not just a matter of seconds. It's fractions of a second that can win or lose the great race. With less than 24 hours to Saturday's top 15 shootout and a chance to pick up bonus points and prize money, things are not right. 
The vehicle is two seconds off race pace, with no sign of improvement in sight. The dynamics of the car are not right, and difficult decisions must be made. The stress is beginning to show on the entire team. Craig Baird gives it his best shot, but the writing is on the wall for the shootout. So, being uh, Friday afternoon, we've really got to take stock of it. So, okay, we're not in tomorrow morning's activities. We'll be out tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, tomorrow yeah, afternoon. So, so, really, we've got to think in terms of you know, mapping, economy, and we're, everything you can do like that, you know, we can comfortably do it. For Team Brock, it is a sit-out, not a shootout. Look on the upside, we're not involved with the distraction of doing the Hardy's Heroes. Exactly right. Well, it's a distraction I wouldn't mind though. <laughs> <laughs> They're sort of saying, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I said, hang on, you're two seconds like slower than the HRT. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how many times you have a go, you're not going to be able to just magically get two seconds no. out of a new set of tyres and having a, 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 and having a red hot go. You've got to start looking at the chassis. You've got to start looking at other things. So uh, that's my point of view. And I know, and I, I did a couple of laps then. And I said, well, that car's got massive understeer as far as I'm concerned. And it won't go any faster with me driving it because every time I get to it, it's Murray's corner, Hill corner, Cuddy. Uh, and I suppose you could say when you get to the uh, forest elbow, like that much understeer, it's grinding across the road. You can see my marks on the road from up before. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, it just goes, through. I said, no, it needs a change. Now, Frank's saying, oh, yeah, if I have this set up, I'm going to have to pull a timeout. So he has a go pulling a timeout. And the answer is, the time's up there. So if, you, if you're gaining wisdom from the experience, which hopefully you could tell, you'd say, well, better try something a little bit different for the next session, which is tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Because the car is not far away. It's, it's, it's quite good as far as uh, race cars are concerned. Yeah. Will it actually go fast enough to be able to comfortably slot in there with the, with the, the top 10 cars, whatever, you know? And that's what we've got to make it do. Forget about pulling a screamer, just yeah. floating along there, pointing in nicely, squeezing the power down, getting a bit of a toe down the street, you know, it's like when you get in the rhythm of the race here and uh, not making any mistakes. So I don't think we're too far away from it. I, my gut feeling is one small change to the rear suspension and uh, we're there. Changing everything for the race um, with your gearbox, bell housing, clutch, lid, axles, tail shaft you name it, the motor gets refitted out back to fresh. Um, that's about it, really. Get it back to really new, so everything's new for the race. How did the guys go today? Um, we were struggling a little bit in qualifying, um, a little bit of understeer. So when we finally got the car right and put some new tyres on it, um, the Shell Helix car dropped the oil at the top of the mountain so we couldn't get a quick lap in, so we don't know yet. The uh, second session of qualifying hasn't finished, so we don't know how we've qualified. So. Looking good for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. No late night tonight? Um, it shouldn't be too late. Be out of here by sort of 8, I'd say. So not too late. Not like the old days where you're here till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. So no, it's good.
To miss the shootout cuts deep, but the disappointment has bonded the team. They are determined to do everything possible to place the vehicle in a competitive position on the starting grid tomorrow. record numbers. How many have come to see the return of the King is hard to tell, but the traditional Saturday afternoon chance for the fans to get up close and personal with the cars and the stars brings them out in their thousands. And he's got to be the best race in Australia. By far. I've been looking forward to getting back here since I left here last year, so... This is part of the course, the signing. It's actually becoming a bigger part of what we do than uh, what we actually do on the racetrack. We do more of this a year than we do spend time on the racetrack, yeah. so I enjoy it. What do you think of the battle stores this year? Uh, so we're just uh, fantastic. So the, I mean, the whole thing is just bigger and bigger every year. The crowds are bigger, the cars are quicker. It's just a phenomenal package. And it'd be nice to stand up top of that podium again. Top like Co-driver's a good guy too. Co-driver's a top bloke. Yeah, top, top bloke, that's Tim Lee. It's a shame he comes from the world. <laughs> <laughs> Can you understand what he's saying? Yeah, what have you got that Team Brock hat on for? What's wrong with Aussie Mail? We're, we're, we're rooting for you too, mate. <laughs> Just barricade it, probably do. Yeah, well, well. I don't want you to go overboard. <laughs> How's the track suiting you? Good. It's, um, fantastic. This year, the surface is nice and good. I like him. Well, so it's a gripping up well, so it's going to be a very fast race. Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. is good. He's got as good a chance as anyone. The yeah. car's still uh, very fast, so it's hard to predict a winner for him. How are you guys feeling about tomorrow? Good as always. Uh, yeah. Let's see what happens. It's a long day. Feeling better than these people getting chucked out of the lane. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you very much. We don't need luck. We've got skill and talent on our side. <laughs> One more. Good on Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 These are the perks and the perks of being a mechanic that's on the road. That's exactly what you like to think so, yeah. Oh, I don't like. A bit disappointing missing uh, the shootout. Yeah, there's a little bit, but um, 
it just shows the competitive competitiveness of this championship, you know. Um, such a big track that um, you know the time wasn't too bad. It was pretty, still pretty competitive, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things. But it's a long race tomorrow, so I hope we'll be we'll be there at the end. The effect of Team Brock's position has not dampened the enthusiasm of the Brock fans as the long line extends. But there is one more practice session, one more chance to get it right. Just put it down when you're ready, Matt. Even the great Harry Firth, winner of the very first Bathurst and a lifelong friend and supporter of Brocky, arrives to offer advice. Very important here. From that day in 1963, when Harry and Bob Jane crossed the line in first position, he has been acknowledged as knowing more about the track than anyone. You've got to be going. Before you get across the corner, you've got to be into it and going. Like 10 miles an hour extra all the way up the hill. Uh, and, and, and what you do while you're doing that, when they uh, came out, you pop the brakes a little bit early. They get really. Harry's been over there. Yeah. Handing me little notes. He's been watching, sitting, yeah. looking. He's feeling the tire when it comes yeah. off the car. They yeah. get the wheel over. He'll sit there and touch it. And he's been telling us uh, little things like it's, the car needs this. Or it does yeah. that. And I said to a few of the boys, ignore what Harry says at your own peril. Because uh, uh, nearly everything he's saying is absolutely spot on. It's as sharp as it is. But it's in 1970s jargon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. And stiff it here and put that on there. And, you know, I thought, it's just amazing how, many, how things change and yet everything yeah. stays the same. This is a time to give it a red hot go.
last, Brocky returns to pit lane happy. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what about the front, though? It's what? The, the front, is that feel Beautiful. Like? Yeah. It's just like you can just arrive there, turn the corner, flatten it. This is a two-driver team, and what suits the king doesn't suit the young gun. You really need to come in there and clean it. I actually like it because it's more, shall we say, uh, overturning, which is easy to do because it's so light. When you start turning the game like that, sort of. You know, it takes a set. Like uh, Reed Park, I was easily quicker through there than, than I've ever been all weekend. Right, okay. Because you, you, what happens, you turn in so easy down the bottom here, it's like either the steering's either C solid because at that point, or it's very light. Well, now it's quite light in this place. I'm thinking well, of the changes we made to the front, we, we took out some of the solid bump spacer and put more spongy stuff in, so the bump rubber comes into place sooner. The other difference is the sway bar that was having a bit of a bind, so well, that's helping as well. Whatever it is, it feels good. Maybe that's why the steering's heavier, it's getting more bite in the front, so the sway bar's not Look, the bottom line is, that is a tight I'd run right with HRT, I'll tell you. With that 90 rear spring, though, set it down, I'd better be a definite. We've got to try it. Yeah, time. absolutely. Well, I reckon you'll find it be better again. Should you put some petrol in it to do that? I'm going to have to try and petrol in it next time. Oh, yeah. The pit crew's job is vital to the team's success, and despite the obvious need for speed, there are many safety factors that they have to adhere to or put everyone at risk and suffer penalties. You want to jump back in? What He's just doing? doing a couple and coming in. He's happy. Let's see what, he, what you reckon. Throw right, them on? Yeah, throw it on. Set well, what, are, what are we achieving? It's got a full guts of fuel in it, isn't it? Yeah, you're happy not to drive it. You'll drive it yeah, warm up. Look, we'll take a fuel. Don't worry. Yeah. You. Frank, well, you sure the rain coming. Yeah. Oh, the rain's coming. We'll stop. I don't mind driving it and having a run in the rain. Oh, yeah. Just for a couple. Yeah, I don't like it with a 90 in it. It just goes back to this. Walking up the hill. You can't turn it in and plant it up the hill. But that's probably why it's good to try it with full tanks. Plus the roll set is down low. Leave the hot ones on it. Wobbling the first lap, those things. And you put them in. They, they knew when you put them on there, they went out. Oh. They're down pretty low on like their race pressure. Yeah. They're up in two laps, they're up in yeah, the third. And then and they did one lap, and oh, it's still a bit of a. Second lap, they should have come on. Second lap, they were starting to come on. Third lap, oh, beautiful. That's why I thought oh, I'd put it away. Yeah. Don't put this on where it is. 
slash funny stream. Huh? car's times improving, Rocky acknowledges the two drivers are beginning to work as a team. I just had a bad lap time with that full tank of juice. Yeah, that's all right. We're good? That's right in there with, uh, you know, you know, all these other guys. Both the race car and the drivers are in tune for tomorrow's great race. Spirits are high. The months of preparation is about to be put on the line. And Team Brock is quietly confident. Okay, folks. All the best for Mark, Peter. And for the fans, the exhilaration, the opportunity of being in the company of Peter Brock is enough. Okay. I'll change. Okay. Right on, folks. Okay. Uh, Linda, we'll do them down there at T Dog. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Today, obviously a little bit disappointed with uh, qualifying yesterday, but that's the way it is. But the car was very, very good as a race car with a uh, full tank of fuel in it. Uh, it was only half a second quicker than what, uh, slower than what we qualified. So uh, I think uh, tomorrow, 
depending on weather and everything. I think Mr. Brock wants it to rain. So hopefully it'll rain when he's in there and not when I'm in there. But uh, hey, it'll be a good day. No matter what happens, uh, I think we'll be there at the end. And uh, if we are, we should uh, hopefully you can film us on the podium. I'll be a lot happier on the podium than here. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch your keys and keys up Yeah, you can't yeah. swear at it. I don't know what these guys would have picked up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I guess I'm feeling uh, probably even more positive because the drivers are uh, quite happy with the car. Peter went out in the uh, session this afternoon and uh, he pronounced the car. I think his words were magnificent over the radio. So uh, as long as they're in a positive frame of mind, I think we're in for a good race. We're starting a little bit down the grid, but that's uh, probably not that all, all that important in a race of this length. So, no, all in all, we're, uh, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, I'll have a few things like Gip. Alright, Gip, thanks. Yeah. tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. looking very good. Yeah. How are you with today's um, times? Yes, the car's a very, very good race package. So, it'll be fantastic, I think. Let's we'll see our game plan for tomorrow. Get the front and cruise the lead? No, seriously, um, but it's a hell of a long way, 161 laps, and the trick is to stay out of trouble and stay on the lead lap is the most important thing. Um, so as long as you can run on the lead lap, then pace car things are you can you can work. As soon as you're off the lead lap, you're in trouble. Um, so we just yeah just uh, go through the, the number of pit stops we have to do and get all them right. Hopefully. Do you want to release? No, no, no secrets. No, just to just get out there and everyone do their best and. Uh, I have a good day. Uh, I do need some Zico over like this place to put on paper. We, so we do the series, so we don't have to do it. We've got some very interesting stuff there. It does. I just think this hamster spins a long time. Yes. Big day. I've had said some things about drivers too that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, he did. Probably, <laughs> actually, you could call two things like that, and, and just as a, like, just a quirk. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll sort him out. Sort him Um, I think you've got some sort of. Thing. We have. Look. Yeah. Oh my We've got some sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> The importance of the Bathurst 1000 race to the survival of Team Brock is paramount. A successful race tomorrow will guarantee the longevity of the team. Sunday, race day. Team Brock, first on the block.
7 a.m. Craig Baird takes the 05 car out on the first warm-up lap of today. The day of the great race, the Bathurst 1000. Everything sweet, yeah, no, the, uh, uh, the car come together well yesterday. Everything that uh, the boys want to do with it come through. And the uh, drivers come out, thumbs in the air. So as a race package, uh, we think we're sort of on the money, so. Yeah. I think so, yeah, both, both guys are hitting about what we believe race pace will be. Um, so, end of the day, 161 laps, check and flag drops, hopefully we're there. Time will tell. Looking forward to it, Craig? Always looking forward to it, mate. What are you expecting? What's that? What are you expecting? Number one. Drop off here, he's done it enough times. I think he might be able to do it, eh? Happy with the car set up? Yeah, the car, I think, is uh, yesterday afternoon. Changed a few things. It's obviously not right early in the week, at least that Friday. So I was pretty happy. Uh, and that gives the team a good feeling. Both drivers agree, the race car is primed and ready. But there are other elements on the horizon. I was talking to a few of the, uh, the locals and they said, yeah, it's looked like there's plenty of times but it hasn't actually rained. But uh, my bet is that it will rain because the V8 thunder usually shakes the clouds a bit and down comes the rain. The eagerness to race has to be tempered with final preparation and cross-checks. There is no mistaking the success of this race. Each year it continues to capture the attention of the Australian public. And this year is no exception, with crowd numbers exceeding expectations. The 1,000-kilometre endurance event is notorious worldwide. Mount Panorama will never be just another race. The track invariably has surprises, and today will be no exception as the race unfolds. Before the race can start, the tradition of the event continues. Over the last 40 years, this place has etched in racing fans' memories, characters and events that have become synonymous with Australian motorsporting history. Peter Brock, the final stage of the journey and the moment 
is not lost. There's an enormous level of emotion and expectation from the, uh, some, you know, the race fans. And, I mean, you can't help but feel that. Um, a few times, you know, I was driving around there before, the crowd were just going ballistic all the time. Oh, they were standing, you know, just applauding and stuff like that, yelling, and I thought, it's pretty nice. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is um, one of those sort of excellent moments that uh, happen in life, and I think I'm very, very, very privileged. How many? 13 minutes. Which is basically, you really want the race to start. Once it starts, it all falls into place. At the moment, although there is, uh, you try, no, they'll have to do it. You're trying to stop yourself without any expectation whatsoever. Uh, some part of you, which is uh, responding to that. A bit of adrenaline and stuff. Thanks, Bob. Photographed here with Dr. Eric Doker. His chiropractic adjustments enabled Peter's return to racing after the Darwin go kart crash. Many trusted friends and colleagues have assisted Peter Brock's return to the mountain. And it would be true to say that this would not have happened without the support of Peter's number one fan, Beth. Oh, it's awesome. It's just amazing. I mean, I just, with that sort of atmosphere and support, you know that no matter what he does, he's going to do his best and they're just going to be happy and he's going to be out there giving everything he can. So, to be honest, it doesn't feel as though we've been away at all. So, Roddy, I'll just give you a count the other laps. But we're probably for now there, which will be checking. Enjoy. It's a long way back to here, isn't it? It's a long way to the top. I know you said it was a challenge. It's a long way to the top. It was sort of like this for his farewell. Um, 
but they never expected to see him back. So I sense this, um, there's a different energy. It was like there was a sadness then, whereas there's a real excitement now. And, and it's like they're more manic. It's amazing. It's just an uh, incredible crowd reaction. Throughout Peter Brock's driving career, there'd always been that yeah, annual appointment at Bathurst, Mount Panorama. And today, even though he's well back on the grid, the anticipation for race start is itching away in Brock Heath, and all Team Brock. Yep, yep. It may well be fresher and stronger hands than the driver getting out. Hi, Kate. Do you want to brief up on that? If you need to come around and just start track of these things, then. Yep. I'll keep an eye out. No problem. The hardest one's nice to there. Yeah, yeah. And Craig's got a full face helmet. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to pull my helmet down the last couple of times, but if I pull it down, then I can, yeah, see, can see what's it. going on. If I don't pull it down, I can see it. Okay. Obviously, over there, top on the top, the mist and lights. Wipe it directly underneath in your rain light. I mean, hopefully, Peter, we won't need them, but looks like there might be a bit of moisture around. Now, what I'm going to do in this stint is basically, if the traffic opens up, obviously I'll take the opportunity. But if not, I just want to just, we'll just get it, the well, first true. tank of juice out of the way. Yeah. And then, you know, this, I mean, it, it could fall into our hands, but yep. I'll be reasonably circumspect because I haven't finished this race. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. Just finish the body tank. We finish sure. it, we'll be uh, looking good. It's interesting, I, um, I think at this stage you get down to the business end of it, I'm actually, if anything, feeling a little bit removed because you know they can't do any more and it just depends what happens, how it unfolds from here on in. So, yeah, I'm excited, I suppose. This is what it's all about. Um, putting on the grid um, for 10 o'clock at Bathurst. After that, we're just in the lap of the gods. The boys have um, prepped the car, you know, the best they can. Obviously, the drivers are uh, totally pumped and everything else. So um, they've got to go to work now, and we just sit back and, and watch. Just on the record, we've been starting on the grid. There's straddle, check, flag line, finish line. So as long as we're back here in about six and a half hours, it's going to be fine. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> That's a good one. Luke. But you're telling them, look at him, he's going for it. <laughs> You've got to get these little bits in. Uh...
Starting is one thing. Staying on that lead lap is all important to have any chance at winning and gaining that prestigious finish. Finishing the Bathurst 1000 is paramount. Sliding out of Conrod Strait into Caltex Chase, these vehicles are travelling up to 300 kilometres per hour plus. Accelerating up the mountain and driving flat out down from skyline into the dipper is not for the faint-hearted. Total concentration and well-honed instincts are vital. Accidents and breakdowns do happen across the circuit. The introduction of the pace car and new rules have become a contentious issue with some drivers. Stop this time, watch the yellow line as you come into pit lane, and remember to do your belt and your uh, radio plug. Radio contact between race car and pit base is vital to this race. This also applies to the pace car because when communication is lost, as happened at this meeting, many teams suffer the consequences. the all-important pit change. The pit crew is hyped and ready. It takes 30 seconds to fill this V8 supercar with race fuel. That's the maximum time this vehicle should be in the pits. But this is Bathurst, and you can guarantee that things will never go to plan.
got it right, so I don't know how long uh, the number 17 car would park there, but when I saw that I just said to the boys, I'm in. There's a car, there's shrapnel, there's all sorts of stuff here, so uh, it takes a car to go. We heard you on the radio a little earlier in your stint going, this is just the best fun. Yeah, it is great. Yeah, the car itself, well, it, it, it's interesting because it changes full tank, fuel, empty. So I was kept busy, and uh, I think uh, Trat and uh, Faulkner around me, so... I was still thinking, I'd like to have a clear bit of road here, but to do that, I've got to pass them. That's going to take some work. First stint into the race, was it still a good idea to come back? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, uh, you know, you're driving around there, the car's running beautifully. I think Craig will get that car up along, so that about that. I, was, I said to the boys before I start, uh, this is going to be all about getting the first two stop. That's great. And uh, our plans, obviously, last 25, 30 laps of the race. Thanks, man. Cheers. Five cars in front of him are all, all the leaders. There's no yeah, one lap in front of him. Tried to take advantage of the safety car, but so did everyone else. Um, so anybody from 16th onwards actually went um, off the lead lap. Yeah. You're joking, I thought that we uh, no. we came in too early. Oh, that's shocking. Yeah. I thought that we probably did all right. But, but safety cars out, we're in, we go straight out behind it, we're looking good. Yeah, we got those. <laughs> safety car, like uh, we should run the extra lap, tighten up, because you know, the car's going to you know, here, they're going to be out for a while. We'll make it up that way. Back up to 19th or something. So yeah, I'll, he'll, he'll get the thing with my lock. I'll do this next thing. And now he'll uh, chuck him and leave him in. The car's running good.
got shuffled back a lap to that pace car, lap 29. Basically through no fault of our own, we just sort of zigged when we should have zagged, I suppose. So we're hoping for uh, a similar sort of turn of the wheel a little later on. But uh, the car seems to be running well, circulating, gets stuck into it, see what happens. Nice. So we should have another six, seven laps at least. I'm going to put my hat on. Sorry? Get my hat on. Yeah, get, your, yeah, we'll get ready anyway. So I think I'm going to run it until it pops on reserve. Unless, yeah. yeah. Yeah, run it for us. Man! Yeah. 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 He's a minute 54 behind. Yeah. Yeah. But if the five cars in front of you kiss, yep. will they wave him through and pick up the genuine leader? They've got to pick up the leader. Yeah, that's right. So the if the kiss. five cars in front of you peel out for a safety car, and we can keep going, they should wave us through and we should be able to catch them back in the train and get back on the lead lap. If the five feel out. If the five feel out. Some race cars are experiencing heating problems. Team Brock is no exception. Plastic inside the uh, radiator inlet. The temperature's going up and down a bit, so it's, uh, it's not real bad, but it's causing us a bit of concern. You've got a couple of minutes, you've got probably three minutes before the safety car comes back around. Right I'll do so your pads. You do your pads, then check them under the bonnet. But do you get the bonnet up? Contact on top of the mountain brings out the pace car again. Team Block takes advantage to check the heating issue and repad brakes.
The situation has not changed. At lap times of 2 minutes 12 seconds, an overheating V8 engine's life expectancy is not great. It just went up to 92, and then all of a sudden I went to 105, and it came back to 97. Well, at least it's not going over the... You know, yeah, but it's going to 115 and set the alarm off. And then, but it's then it's coming, coming, back it's coming back down. Well, that's good. Yeah, but it's Mate, still got pressure. We didn't if it had no water in it, in when you undid that cap, it wouldn't have spewed any water out. Exactly. Yeah. There's heaps of water in there. Yeah. Well, well, there's heaps of pressure. Well, there's heaps of pressure. Yeah. Let the pressure out and you know, pull the cap up and there's heaps of water. So I'll put it straight back on again because we weren't going to achieve anything. Do you want to have another look? Wait till he catches the back of the train and we can get him back in no. it. No, 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 it's good. There's nothing you can do. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, just keep it on. If there's something wrong, it's internally. Yeah. If you wanted to try something else, no, yeah, no. it's just back on the back of the train. Like, come in, spend another few minutes in here, go back out, still I, not lose anything. I think, yeah, you just got to see more of the same because as soon as it lifted it, it just had bloody, bloody fluid. Yeah, look, there's, there's no coolant anywhere around the water yeah. pump or hoses or anything. It's plenty of everything in there. Drug on. Yeah. Very good, Down a lap and with heating problems. The decision is made. Replace the thermostat. sign of improvement. But this is the great race and for Team Brock their Bathurst 1000 story unfolds. Push it in the bay and do what? Change the radio? <coughs> well, do you want to try that? To challenge the mountain without mishap or risk is not the Bathurst story. Mastery of machine and mind is the challenge here. and that all-important finish. Um, overheated and the guys have checked everything. Our chief engineer Ron Harris said, oh, it could be the impeller on the water pump slipping. I said, Law, you're drawing a very long bow there, Ronnie. Look, I was thoroughly enjoying myself that last stint, uh, particularly amongst the traffic down the back, passing a few cars. I thought, life is good. I enjoyed it. Now, there's not a lot to salvage now from the rest of this day, but you obviously have very big plans for Team Rob, you know, 2003 onwards. Do you still gain a lot from today? Oh, very much so. Uh, Craig and I were both just chatting about the the drivability of the car, you know, how nicely you can actually flow it into the corners and, you know, get some uh, balance and get some speed. And we both agreed that with a couple of corners we didn't have quite the speed of the front row. I'm talking 
you're talking HR2 here, because he's running with Ambrose and those guys. I thought, this thing's a bit of a weapon. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I've got some bad news for you. You've just been dealt a black flag for that fuel incident in pit lane two. I'm not surprised because, uh, I mean, that actually happened. We didn't refuel the car to cause that. That was just the temperature of the fuel rising as the car's parked, because we'd, we'd only just uh, refueled it. And it's spilling out, so uh, anyway, that's the, that's life. You can't spill petrol, there's no doubt about that. You did tell me that you were enjoying the stint in there, considering that you haven't finished here at Bathurst, and you are enjoying the moment. Could we see you come back again? Oh, I just my daughter to see you next week. She's looking at me with expect perspectively, <laughs> saying, What is Dad going to say? Would he do this again? Uh, I never like to say never, because life has always got the little twists and turns. And I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed myself out there today, but I have no intention of driving again. So our situation doesn't have to change. Well, let's hope it doesn't end here. Thanks for your time today, Peter. Thank you. For Craig Baird and Peter Brock, their race is not run yet. They're here to give it their best shot. there are limits to just how fast you want to go. What was that? What wrong sorry mate, can you say again? Ronald Jim. Ronald Jim. Ronald Jim. I don't know how many reds, but I have to, I can't have one to complete the collection. I'm going up here without the It's still right, okay? Frank, tell him to bang it up and down bed, I said. Then I said jump up and down on it and it should come free. Yep. I'm doing that, it's not coming free. No, it's not coming free. No, no, definitely not. Keep going or what? What do you want to do, right? Is it still stuck or is it freed up? Not helping me. Uh... the funnels jam as you go over the crest. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Jesus! Well, it's been exciting. Hey? It's been full of excitement. Well, they've got to fix that properly because you can't... Like, it came good once and then it did it again going into the uh, curve at the back there. It's not sticking flat, but it's down about... But it's about half throttle. So it just keeps going, you know? You put your foot on the brakes, the front wheels just lock up and it just keeps going straight ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 
but I wouldn't mind betting it's something that happened when they were pulling it all apart to check out the radio. So it's very exciting. Right above you, mate. Classic, I forgot motor racing can be this exciting. Things happen. The car's actually going good, I'm enjoying it. You can actually go out there, particularly if you get in the back of the uh, freight train, and really have, you know, cut it up amongst those guys, and then you've got to do something else, like a drive through penalty or something. So then you can get a chance of going out again, doing it again. True to form, Bathurst turns on the weather to liven up the event. It did fix it for a while, yeah, but it's come back again. So now we are bashing our head against the rip. Yeah. We've knocked him off in the revs, and it's, yeah, it's under control, but it's not good. So that means 
20, one less he can do. Because if he's done 185, sorry, 86, that means 20 more is 106 plus one. 21 more he can do. Okay. And how many more is the race got to go? 24. 24. And he's not going to do that many laps, the speed he's doing. No. But if he does 21 more, that'll be 137. No, no, I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, well, if we could just keep rolling around, the leaders have got 23 left. How many of the leaders got left? 23. 23? Yeah. So we've got to be at 18. See, I don't know where... Um, whether it gets dragged out of the... Whether it did, did it crash or did it... Ah, no, it must be on a truck, so he's... Had it. It's on a track, he's had it. We've got a couple of scenarios. Uh, we've got um, Craig Lowndes on 127 As laps. As laps fly by and Mount Panorama takes care of business, Ron Harrop, now the numbers man, conceives a strategy to allow Team Brock to complete the race. Ronnie's just doing the numbers now, what he The leaders have 21 laps to go. You've done 118. The car. Sorry, the car's done 118. So theoretically we'll go one, two, and three. We can move up three more. So which puts us twenty if if what you kept going? Yeah. Just cruising around. Yeah. We just keep going the place we're going. Yeah, I reckon the safety car's off this lap, mate. We've got to get 121 no matter what. of the mountain looking down favorably on Brocky as he approaches the start finish line alongside Mark's scape and the Holden racing team as they take the checkered flag.
That's a worry because at this time of night, brands get brands. You know what was good fun then? Was going along on those throttle and work out where they're going to pass you and let them by without holding them up. Like dive off over here and in through there. Because you can't wave your arms these days because of the window nets. So you've got to do it with the camera. Pull it out, mate. I still need to fling it. Pull it out. Thank you very much. Well, absolutely, mate. We'll have to finish this one. Yeah, exactly. Let's finish it now, mate. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, anything over about a tenth throttle, and uh, it would. Oh, yeah. Go for the roof, yeah. Let's get you in and get
In post-race analysis back in Melbourne, Ron Harrop determined that the radiator header tank had a design manufacture fault. The radiator and thermostat were okay. Simply, when the vehicle was first built some years ago, the water flow intake from the header tank was reversed, which restricted the water pressure and reduced the cooling capacity. Yeah.